Hello, welcome back. This is John Clayton, Contracts, Claims and Disputes. In this short slidecast, I'm going to talk about methods of delay analysis, giving a very brief overview of each type. In earlier talks, um, what is delay analysis and delay analysis, I have introduced the what and the why of delay analysis. With this talk, I introduced the how, giving an overview, a brief overview, of the formally recognized methods. In later talks, I will explain the individual methodologies. There are five principal uh, methods. The as-planned versus as-built analysis, an impacted as-planned analysis, collapsed as-built analysis, a window analysis, and a time impact analysis. Now, it should be noted that some contracts, in fact, specify the method to be used, but it can generally be said that whatever method works for the owner works for the project. So some pros and cons. If we think about as built versus as planned, it's very easy to understand. It has the disadvantage, however, that effects of mitigation or efforts of mitigation and acceleration cannot be separately identified and shown. And the cost of preparation is medium. Next, looking at impacted as planned, this is again very easy and very quick to prepare. It has the advantage, therefore, of being the lowest of the cost for preparation. That said, it has a low acceptability in dispute management and similarly mitigation and acceleration cannot be shown. Now, for collapsed as built, it's relatively easy to understand and medium cost of preparation. The subjective logic is a bit of an issue and again mitigation and acceleration are hard to identify. A window analysis, now this is very comprehensive and it has the advantage it can be combined with other methods. The disadvantages are that um, there must have been accurate schedule updates needed for each of the windows and the cost of preparation is high. Now for time impact analysis which is the, perhaps the only one where you can uh, identify mitigation and acceleration, also needs a very accurate schedule and logic updates. This shows the impact at the time of the delay. The cost of preparation of this method is the highest. So, looking briefly at as-planned versus as-built analysis, a step-by-step -step overview might be well, what was planned to happen, that is, if you like, P, the as-planned program, what did happen, and that's B, the as-built program, what was the variance, clearly, the difference between B and P, what was the effect on the project schedule, which may or may not be the same as B and P, but study the differences between the start dates, durations, and completion dates of affected activities. And the following actions are to establish responsibility between the parties based on the causes of deviations in the activities.
Similarly, for impacted versus as planned, what was planned to happen? Again, plan program as planned, P. What did happen? This is the as planned program with the addition of activity delays encountered. What was the variance? Again, the difference between I, impacted, and P, planned. And what was the effect on the project schedule? Again, not necessarily the difference between I and P. The additional time delay is shown by the difference between the impacted program P and the planned program I. Next actions. This to seek and establish the responsibility between the parties based on the causes of the individual activity delays. Now, collapsed as built analysis. Again, what was planned to happen? And that's what we call the as built program minus delays, M. And what did happen? What actually happened, of course, was the as built program, B. What was the variance? The difference in completion dates of B and M. And what was the effect on the project schedule? Well, let's take the completion date. M from as built program B to demonstrate the total effect of delays. Next actions, as always, seek to establish responsibility between the parties based on the delays actually deduced. Window analysis. Again, what was planned? An element of the project time period extracted from the program and shown in a window program which we'll call W. What did happen? The window program updated with actual progress, which is U. What was the variance? Difference for this window between completion dates of W and U. And what was the effect on the project schedule? Well, take the completion date W from U to demonstrate the effect of delays in this window. The next actions, to repeat the above for each measurable delayed activity and then seek to establish responsibility between the parties based on the causes of the delays deduced. Five, time impact analysis. Again, what was planned? What was planned was the updated program immediately prior to the occurrence of a delaying event. And what did happen? The updated program U with the delay added T. What was the variance? Again, the difference in completion dates T and U. And what was the effect on the project schedule? We'll take the completion date U from T to show effect of added delays. Next action, seek to establish responsibility between the parties based upon the causes of the delays deduced in all activities. Now some takeaway points. Whichever method is chosen, the baseline program should be logically based. Whichever method is chosen, the schedule should have been regularly and accurately updated during the execution of the works. If delay was suffered and responsibility apportioned to the contractor, no extension will be due. If delay was suffered and apportioned to the owner, extension should be granted, together perhaps with delay costs. But, if more than one event caused delay, with one due to the owner and one due to the contractor, it may be that concurrent delay has occurred.
Lastly, thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.